Undo send. Oh, <laughs> that's a cool little animation. It just... So Apple just dropped unlucky version 13 of macOS called Ace Ventura. And as per tradition, we're gonna do an installation sensation and I invite you to join me. Sponsored by Linode. Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and one thing I love to do on this improvised tech show is installation sensations. This system is currently running Monterey, but soon we're gonna have it run Mac OS 13 beta, which I don't even remember opening this up, yet it, 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 it opened by itself. Okay, that's just great. So let's go ahead and install this, and we'll test it out and try out some of the new features, and uh, hopefully it all works. Unlucky 13, but... Maybe we'll be lucky today. The Crazy Ken curse might be generous. Yes, I have read the whole thing. You just didn't see me. Mac OS 13 beta will be installed on this disk. Now, I don't really want to do that, so if it's possible, let's actually go into disk utility and make another partition or whatever it's called with APFS to install this onto. I've never done this with APFS dual booting on a Apple Silicon system. Hopefully it's easy to do. So I'm just gonna add a new volume and call it Ventura, APFS, throw that on there, and this could totally fail. We'll find out. So far, so good. Green check marks are good things. So let's relaunch that quickly. Continue. Select the user to set it as the owner for the new volume. Copy account settings. No idea what that means, but uh, okay. Your computer is not connected to a power source. These Apple Silicon Macs last forever on the battery. I think we'll be okay. Okay, hopefully I did it right. So we have about 52 minutes remaining on this stage. I wouldn't be surprised if it jumps ahead, but there's gonna be a couple stages of installation. And then of course, as per installation sensation tradition, we'll test it out. I'm way more excited for Ventura than I was for Monterey. The new features look really cool. I was watching the keynote and they kind of glossed over this, but the new settings app, it's completely redesigned. It's not called system preferences anymore. That actually has me kind of excited. <laughs> so as we wait for this, just a couple bits of information. This will be available as a public beta in July and it will be available to everyone else in fall. No specific date yet. As for hardware compatibility, Ventura murdered a lot of the hardware support. Nothing older than a 2017 Mac. There's some 2018 cutoffs and 2019 cutoffs, but 2017 is the bare minimum. And we just jumped to 39 minutes remaining. It's moving pretty quick. 34, whoa, silver DeLorean. We're just like flying through time here. About a minute remaining. 47 seconds. 44, 43, 43, 43, 43, 43. Still at 43, just in case you were wondering. If this keeps happening, 43 is gonna outlast conversion technology is my new catchphrase. Zero seconds. Click restart to install macOS 13 beta. Your computer may restart more than once. It probably will. So let's restart. See what happens. It's a beta, there could be problems. Also, me not knowing the whole dual booty thing with Apple Silicon could also cause problems. Hey, it wouldn't be a Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures episode without problems. All right, got the white Apple logo on the black screen, good sign. And eventually we should get a little progress bar with a little time indicator. Okay, there's the progress bar. Okay, progress bar is almost full. Don't get too excited. This is probably still gonna reboot and do another progress bar. Unless it's just really that fast. It just rebooted now. Now it's chugging along. While we're waiting for the installation to finish, I might as well mention I launched some new stickers. In fact, this is my first sticker merch drop ever. You can check them out with the link in my description. On my Etsy store, we got a new Computer Clan logo that's iridescent. The colors change with angle of the light. Got some funny bumper sticker type parody stickers, like my other computer is a Next Cube, my other computer is a Commodore 64, and everyone wants an edit button on Twitter, so I made edit buttons. You can just put an edit button on anything you want now. So yeah, go ahead and check them out. Worldwide shipping, autographed items available too. Link in the description, and I hope you like them. Whoa. Got a mouse cursor. Is it done already? That was fast. I I'm not used to the OS installation going that quick. But holy cow, yeah, here it is. Okay. I I hope it all worked. My mouse is not paired. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, keyboard is working just fine. Oh, there we go. Just took a second. Okay. 
Well, let's get OS contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. And I appreciate that. Yeah, before installing this software, you should back up all your data. It's not to be used in a commercial environment. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a beta, guys. Ooh, pretty icon. Yes, always back up your stuff. Crazy Ken. Analytics, yes, you can't opt out of it when you're doing a beta. That's kind of the point of a beta is to improve the software. Screen time, set up later. Don't need to know that. Not a huge fan of Siri. And here we are in macOS Ventura, macOS version 13. Feedback assistant, yes. Submit feedback to Apple when you notice problems, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna accept the license agreement. Close that for now. So here is the wallpaper we get with this Mac because Apple has tailored wallpapers for different products. But I really like the new wallpaper in Ventura. So we're gonna set that and I think that looks beautiful. And hey, there's the redesigned settings. Oh, it is called system settings. All right, not system preferences anymore. Okay, cool. We'll uh, take a look at that in a sec. We gotta christen it with going to the about this Mac screen and it's new. <laughs> it's a, that's a new looking window. MacBook Pro, chip, memory, serial number, Mac OS. Pretty simplified and clean, a lot smaller than the previous version of the about screen. Pretty cool. Stage manager, that was the first big feature they showed. So let's just open up a couple random things. Contacts, calendars, notes, eh, you know, all that good stuff. So we have five different applications open here. We can use expose or mission control to switch between them. So yep, here it is right here in the control center. We can turn on stage manager and let's see what it does. Okay, it throws everything on the side here with this like a little angled interface. So you can switch between them like this and they move into the center and then back. And I'm guessing you can still move them around. And then when you go back to them, it remembers the position they were on the screen. Okay, if there's a way to auto hide this, I think that would be better because that's taken up quite a bit of screen real estate, but I still think it could be a cool feature. Again, this is the first beta, they'll figure it out. Let's try dragging things together here. So yeah, now we have two applications, Contacts and Safari. And if we switch to Podcasts, for example, now we can see the Contacts and the Safari applications just grouped together in the sidebar there. And I'm willing to bet when we click them, both will, try that again, both will pop out to the front yet again. Very awesome. And when you go into Mission Control, it looks like you still get access to all the windows, but there is this weird little glitch. Did you see that? It animates in, but it doesn't animate out. The windows just cut back instead of moving back. The windows move back to the stage manager position, but they don't move back like how normal mission control works. A little bit of a bug? No worries. That's what the feedback assistant is for. That could be a pretty cool feature. I think auto hide is the only thing I would want from that. Maybe we can change a setting. Speaking of settings, let's poke around in system settings. So let's turn off stage manager for now. Oh, show recent apps, hide recent apps. Oh wait, hang on, what? What did that just do there? Wait a minute. Whoa, okay, so I guess you can't, oh, you can hide it, okay, you can hide it. Oh, that's so cool. Now you can just move to the side and they animate in like that. Well, there you go, problem solved. So, and the groups are persistent. The grouped applications are maintained. Look at that. Isn't that fun just to discover that stuff in the moment? Oh, that's always such a treat. Let's just hide those in the background and go to the newly designed system settings, which has been called system preferences for so long. It's the end of an era. You remember the really old Mac OS X where it was called system prefs in the menu bar? Oh yeah, good times. Anyway, system settings, let's fire this bad boy up. This I'm actually really excited for. I know that sounds kind of silly, but system preferences has had the same look and layout forever. So it's nice that Apple changed it and now it's more consistent with how it looks on iPad OS and iOS. So I think this was a good move. But yeah, it looks like everything is just on the sidebar now. And as you click through those options, all of the menu items or all of the corresponding settings are on the right side. And look at that, little switches. Changing the alert sound. It's now a pop-up menu instead of a list of sound effects. Let's crank that up. Boop, we'll just keep it to the default boop. Let's quit out of there and take a look at Spotlight. So you can do things like create timer and it's showing a shortcuts icon here. So it's using the shortcut system to do that. Never tried this before. <laughs> Let's double click it and see what it does. Oh, for how long? Uh, five seconds. Okay, 
I created a timer for five seconds, but I, uh, I don't know if something's supposed to happen. Well, let's open up the clock app and investigate. First time looking at the new clock application. It looks just like it does on iPad OS, which I would expect. You can set timers, stopwatches, alarms, and you can have a world clock display inside here, inside the clock app. So Apple's website does say you can do things like this with the clock, like start timer and all that, but I'm pretty sure I proved that doesn't work just yet, so maybe that will be a beta 2 thing. But uh, let's uh, try getting back to Spotlight to try to do something useful. There's a much more rich image search. I don't personally use Spotlight to search web content. I prefer just to do that inside of Safari, but let's test it out. Let's type in Bill Gates. There we go. Now we have images right there. Home also got an update. Visually, yeah, a little bit different here. It looks like you can have different tile sizes. I'm trying to click this like full screen looking button here. I'm guessing that lets you change the size of the tiles. Instead of everything being the same size, you have like rectangles and squares and stuff, but the button doesn't seem to do anything and I can't get it to show up on the other tiles. So I think it's just being a little buggy, but it is a beta. Ah, music quit unexpectedly. That's not a surprise. That app really needs a rewrite. Weather, you know, we were waiting forever for the weather app to come to iPad. Well, now it's there, but it's also on Mac OS. Let's bust that bad boy open. Let's see, it is dash dash temperature in Cupertino. That sounds cold. It's negative negative. I guess weather doesn't exist in California. In some places that's true. Okay, let's try to add a location. All right, that plus button's not working. Let's open up the sidebar. Let's go to New York. Weather exists in New York. Good to know. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's uh, take this full screen. All right, so we have the nice animated backgrounds like you get on iOS. And here's the 10-day forecast, the hourly forecast, UV index, air quality, even it looks like some sort of a precipitation map with like a Doppler radar sort of thing. That's cool, pretty nice. Let's uh, go visit another place, Hell, Michigan. Let's see the temperature in Hell. Weather also doesn't exist in Hell, Michigan. Okay. Um, does weather only exist in New York? <laughs> Let's try uh, San Jose. Okay. Um, Sorry, everywhere else on the planet, you don't get weather. It's showing the forecast here. It does say 76 degrees with sunny, but you click it and now it works. Okay. Hey, did I mention this is a beta? Weather is important. You experience it every day. Unless you live 10 stories underground like me. I'm really only concerned with tectonic plates. So messages got some nice updates on all platforms and two heavily requested features were undo send and edit. I have not tested them yet, but we're gonna do it now for the first time on a beta. That's great. I have Steve here from Mac84. I didn't tell him I was gonna do this. It looks like he just read my message, so we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna do this now. He's on iOS 15. <laughs> Send read receipts. F that. I'm gonna edit this. Right click edit. Okay, let's see. Um, I like cereal. Oh hey, that. That worked. I, I don't know how that reflects for him on iOS 15, but let me try undo send. Oh, <laughs> that's a cool little animation. It just popped out of existence like that. Oh, it actually says you unsent a message, but he might be able to see it on devices running older versions of iOS. But that makes sense. I don't see how the older software could interpret that. At least it warns you. So if you send something embarrassing and you want to undo send it, I guess just make sure you're not sending it to someone who has an older version of iOS because they'll probably still see your message. But with time, everyone will get upgraded and it will be okay. There's other features that I can't really show because they're not very visual. Also, I think one of them requires iOS 16 beta and I don't have that yet if the feature is even rolled out yet, but continuity camera lets you use your iPhone as a webcam on your Mac. Yes, there were third-party solutions for that before, but Apple having that built in can now be really handy, especially if people still have the studio display and they're complaining about some of those quality issues. Hey, now you can just use your phone to fix that. It appears they're also doing rapid security response for really quick software update pushes that 
patch security problems, so that's new. And Freeform is another application Apple is sneak previewing right now. It's not available in the betas yet, at least I couldn't find it anywhere, but I'm sure we'll get it in future software updates, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And of course, I have to thank my awesome friends at Linode for helping me out. I've been working with them for years and they've helped me and they can help you out too. If you have an application or a website that you need to scale and deploy, Linode offers all the infrastructure and the 24 seven support you'll need. But the cool thing is Linode is much more than just data centers. Linode offers out of box apps for game servers like TF2, CSGO, and even Minecraft. You can run your own virtual private network with OpenVPN, build an online application with Joomla's content management system, or build a video streaming site with a multitude of app choices. There's so much you can do with Linode's affordable Linux virtual machines. And to boot, they offer award-winning 24-7 technical support. To put it simply, if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Visit linode.com slash computerclan and click the create free account button. And when you do that, I'll give you a 60-day $100 credit just for watching this episode. And also, you're supporting the computer clan. So thank you very much. So I'm really excited for how Mac OS Ventura is looking. Of course, I didn't cover all the features and there's more stuff coming out in future betas, but if you tried it, let me know what you think. Even if you didn't try it, still let me know what you think and tell me what your favorite features are. And feel free to subscribe for more tech episodes coming out every week. I love making episodes about rare and retro tech, new tech, and of course, scam tech. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Catch the crazy and pass it on.